Welcome listeners and viewers. This is a broadcast for the National Writing Project. Today is October 30th, 2018, and I am really excited to have a chance to talk with colleagues of ours who are, um, well, working hard with their kids in their class around topics and themes raised by um, the documentary film American Creed, but also topics and themes in our world today as the midterm elections are next week and we're thinking a lot about um, uh, what it means to be civically engaged um, in our communities and beyond. So thank you all for being here tonight. I'm really excited to talk about this and I just want to sort of make clear to our listening or viewing audience also that um, we are getting ready for an NCTE um, session. Um, that's called Writing Our Futures, Youth, Public Writing, and American Creed. If you're at NCTE, please join us. Um, the session will be on Friday, November 16th from 3.30 to 4.45. We're going to be in room 381B. And um, if you aren't there, um, we encourage you to, um, you know, check out the rest of this video and audio recording that we're doing because we're going to just test out some of the things that we're thinking about sharing at NCTE. So it's a little bit of a trial here, a little bit of looking at each other's student work and thinking about what would um, support people in really thinking about this work together um, when we're face to face. And so we'd love to have you engage with us here from a distance too. Um, to find out more about Writing Our Future's American Creed, go to writingourfuture.nwp.org slash American Creed. I'll just say briefly that um, American Creed is a PBS uh, documentary made by a group named called Citizen Film, and it is being re-released at the end of November um, with some new uh, clips, actually, of colleagues of ours um, and their students, um, uh, Casey Olson, and his students are in it, as well as some other uh, students' um, classrooms of uh, history teachers um, who are part of the Facing History and Ourselves Network. So stay tuned for the re-release of American Creed. We're also really excited about that. Okay, so I'm your host, sorry I forgot to introduce myself, Christina Cantrell. I work at the National Writing Project. I have the great honor to work with this incredible network. And I thank you all for joining us. Why don't we go around and do introductions, um, just say who you are, where you are, what state you're in, because of the midterms coming up, and um, uh, and who you teach. Um, Suzanne, why don't you start? All right, I'm Suzanne Sutton. I teach pre-AP eighth grade English at Classen School of Advanced Studies in Oklahoma City, and gearing up for a pretty exciting governor race, and also, um, midterm elections and legislative races. So it's been a pretty interesting time to teach American Creed this fall. Excellent. Janelle? Hi, I'm Janelle Benz, and I teach ninth graders honors slash pre-AP English one um, at New Tech High at Coppell. It's a suburb outside of Dallas. And Dawn, thank you. Hi, I'm Dawn Reed. I teach ninth graders american lit and creative writing this year at okamas high school in okamas michigan which is about five miles away from michigan state university and i'm a co-director of red cedar writing project at michigan state university and we've had a lot of conversation around american creed work in my american lit class perfect fit there Excellent, great. And I should mention, I'm in Pennsylvania, so we are also gearing up for a big governor's election and uh, uh, been calling um, on my extra time, get out the vote. Great, so thank you everyone and thanks for taking the time to be here tonight. Um, in preparing for this broadcast and actually preparing for our NCTE session, we talked about wanting to start with the student work and start with the things that youth were creating. If you um, actually, let me just share real fast the American Creed site. Um, you'll see that um, here is the website for um, American Creed where youth are publishing. And you can see that there are um, uh, responses all, from all over the country responding to the main uh, uh, writing prompts 
um, that are sparked by this film. And, um, and in there at this point are about a thousand um, responses by students, which is super exciting. And we wanted to really have a chance to look at some of this work together and also just and, and talk about it and, and sort of notice together. What do we see in the work? What does it make us wonder about? What questions does it raise for us? And what kind of themes do we see across when we share work together? So um, we were just gonna, um, each one of us share one piece of work and give um, a little bit of context and background, view the work, and then um, answer any sort of clarifying questions that we might have, but let the, um, those of us who aren't the teacher talk a little bit about what we see or what we notice in the work. And we'll go through each, um, uh, Suzanne, Janelle, and Dawn will each share a piece of work and um, we'll start to, to see what kind of pieces, what kind of themes emerge. Um, let's see, Janelle, how, uh, I was thinking you might go first. And the piece that I have here is The Patriot by Isabella Zeff. Do you wanna give us a little bit of the context for this work? Yeah, so um, I have freshmen and it's a, huge year for them reinventing themselves and really trying to articulate and get a handle of exactly who they are, their identities. Um, so it's best to get them in a, as more, as much of a comfortable position as they can be. So uh, we started with a little bit of background historical reading, and then I opened it up to some poems and things like that, and they could use their own research as well, but I invited them to do a found a poem on what it meant to be American to them. And so they created pieces about that and also curated images that supported the messages that they were um, writing about with these found words. Um, and I, I think they turned out pretty nice. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So let's look at Isabella's work, and then we might have some more questions for you. And then in a sort of descriptive way, let's sort of talk about um, Suzanne and Dawn and I can sort of just talk about some of the things we notice in it as it goes, okay? Let me share my screen. This is always the awkward part. Okay, you can see that? Okay, look. here we go. This is two minutes and 25. From dark Ireland shore, and Poland's plain, and England's grassy lea, and from black Africa's strand they came, to build a homeland of the free. A patchwork pattern quilt, stitched together end to end, or strange pieces chopped from different trees they've stemmed, built, cobbled, nailed as one, into a grand ship of legend. Her sails of liberty blow, her freedom flag waves with pride, cannons of justice pierce her hull, patriot reads the proud riding on her side. People come from all around to join her motley crew of liberty and unity, for freedom and for life anew. All the boats that sail these seven seas, the Patriot will eclipse, a beautiful nation of nations, a magnificent ship of ships. Though from many different places, both far away and near, once aboard the mighty ship, each member may speak with no fear. From her crow's nest on her mast to the rooms beneath her decks, every inch of ship is equal, that each of them do protect. The Patriot sails through swirling waters. The captain's charting never errs. He spins the wheel and steers the ship, but plots a course to nowhere. For all the dreams they've dreamed, and all the songs they've sung, and all the hopes they've held, and all the flags they've flung, the Patriot is stagnant. All is not what it seems. This ship is going nowhere. This ship of righteous dreams. A tiny fatal flaw lay hidden in the plans to build the ship of freedom overlooked by many hands. There's but a tiny crack splitting down her side, so the crew may talk of glorious dreams but may never turn the tide. Just one person on the boat sees the water seeping in. They rally the crew to action to restore her from within. The water's gone, and in its place, understanding trickles in of their place and role and part to which ignorant they've been. Their talk is well and good. Ideas never fail. 
but the ship must sail to somewhere, or it is all to no avail. Now the captain charts a course, the Patriot sails across the ocean blue, with the quality not just of their own, but for the whole world too. From dark Ireland's shore, and Poland's plain, and England's grassy lee, and from black Africa's strand they came to build a homeland of the free. Yay! <laughs> um, just so you know, that one image, the old image, was actually an image of her family because they came over. So it was interesting as they created it is that awesome interaction with other members of the family to find out what their roots were. Um, and That's cool. It's very relevant, yeah. Yeah, I heard her mention Ireland and Poland and England. Do you know where her family came from? Yeah, Ireland. Ireland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. cool. And it could be the other ones, but I know that like that's the one that sticks out in my head. But she was also, um, she was, they were very much, since they read the Langston Hughes poem, um, very clear in saying, you know, we, they, a lot of people come here for the dream. And, you know, we talked about it the American dream and promises made and then what happens when it doesn't have you know it doesn't come true so there was a lot of that conflict and tension in her poem yeah that's one of the things I noticed which I thought was really um well just to say on notice without saying my <laughs> of it, I definitely noticed that and I noticed one of the things I thought was interesting is I I think I noticed a kind of shift in tone when it got to her collage. So I think that the one collage of um, the Liberty Bell, I believe, um, the print is hers because I've seen that. Right. Yeah. Those prints were done in your class before, and it says on it um, diversity and equality, which is interesting. And then she sort of turns to like where there might where there was diversity or there's, there's something about one, there's a crack and one person notices it. Right, so that was another um, piece that they had done prior to was finding those specific values. I think they chose three or four values that were probably the most significant and important to them. And then they created these images overlaying, creating like brush strokes with them, with, I think it was, I don't know if it was Illustrator or Photoshop, one of the two, I get them confused, <laughs> really, but you know, but they um, also came up with a, something that was a symbol or maybe a building. Some of them did people as well that were Americans that just stand out for them. She chose the Liberty Bell. Suzanne or Dawn, things that you noticed? Sure. So I was about to, I was going to snap as soon as we were done, but I was muted. I was excited <laughs> to snap for poetry. Okay. So I noticed the emphasis and passion in the student's voice that stood out to me in terms of the delivery um, that was, of course, impacting the message as well. And a real um, honoring of, I noticed, appreciation of a roots and appreciation of what is part of American culture, um, even though I also noticed those tensions. And then I would also say the that I found the images were also worth noting, but as already described. Something like I picked up on, I was really listening to like her word choices and her arrangement of like how it flowed through the poem and at first it's like this coming together building something um and as she mentions were like the quilt all these pieces coming together and then it turns into the ship and every part has its function and it has to work together but then all of a sudden it becomes stagnant and so you know you can kind of see like the problem sticking and finally somebody notices it and then they, they can fix it and i really just think that's really a poignant thing to notice, like you have to address these issues, you just can't keep going or your ship's gonna sink, you know? So it's really inviting that dialogue and especially, um, you know, one of the things you can tie back to American Creed is opening those lines of dialogue because right now we're in a place where we just yell at each other instead of talk and 
you know, you could see that ship sinking further and further down until you address those issues and get to the root of it. It's never really going to come together. So I just really felt that message that you have to address those issues. You have to fix it and then bring it back together. I thought that was a really strong metaphor. <laughs> Um, just, uh, we had just done, completed our um, spoken word project where there was a performance element. So I'm glad that you noted um, passion. She was a very quiet girl prior to. So just having the narration um, was good. I'm glad that you noticed that. So um, they also did a lot of like feedback, feedback of the written, feedback of the images, feedback of the timing, feedback of, oh, well, maybe you need to change that or is there one other thing? Or she really initially had too many extended metaphors going, um, Suzanne. So we yeah. were like, you need to choose because it's too, too much. One. It was yeah. Too <laughs> um, so, and that process is actually on if you one of the other links. So um, all of that in in terms of them getting feedback, um, there's another resource there. So, but you know, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say that. Um, here in uh, at the American Creed website in the visit our classrooms link under resources are uh, links to um, some additional resources by actually all of you have resources mm -hmm. there and this one links to I think this is what you're mentioning right Janelle um, there's a video here that shows this video I believe mm -hmm. that shows some of your dialogue with the students Oh, are you muted? Yes, and with each other. Um, and then there was a, like a, a mini lesson at the front using um, some song lyrics to help them get a little bit deeper. Oh yeah, I saw that in the video too. Yeah. That's great. Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Oh, um, any questions that people have for Janelle, sort of after taking a look at that, or should, if we don't have any specific questions, we can wait to leave. I, I have one because my class this year discussed American Creed today. So, and, and one of the big pieces that seems resounding for them, that both of my sections of American Lit brought up today, is the notion of conversation that somebody asked the question, do Americans value discussion? And do they actually wanna get at some of the tough issues in society? And I wondered, as I heard Janelle and as I heard Suzanne really talk about the piece a bit more in terms of, and Christina, all of you brought up tensions, you brought up um, the notion of, are we able to talk to one another as citizens? And then I also heard that come out in metaphor. Um, so I just wondered for Janelle, if there are, were moments where that, that was tough to talk about with students or moments where students brought that up, this notion of dialogue and conversation. Um, and I think it's an interesting thing to think about because that is spurred from poetry. So I just was wondering on the back end if, any of those ideas came up or if that was a, an intent to put it toward a metaphor? Yeah, I think that, um, I mean, I think that teaching freshmen, right? Um, they're definitely, they're, they're like tiptoeing around things. Um, a lot of them are very hesitant to discuss things. They think that being civically engaged, you necessarily need to talk about politics and things like that, right? Like, Ooh, and that's a bad word, just because they haven't been taught to talk, to discuss things like that civilly. Um, but I do find that they want to bring up those tensions and those things that aren't clear to them. Issues like, you know, here we are, we want to be diverse, but not, but diverse to a point. Like we're equal to, a, you know, we have equity to a point. We are welcoming to a point. Um, and I think that that was beautifully articulated in this piece, but I, I do want to say that being able to give feedback on the work gets to those discussions. Um, like Stan Peshek and I, when we were talking and we were working on um, CWAC and things like that, we took, 
we were talking about, you know, why it is important to assess this public facing writing and how just conferences with teachers talking about the work models and also says, you know, it teaches students to really look at what is there, right? What is there? Why is it there? What does it mean? What are the implications of that? What else can be said? What else can be considered, right? And I think that this was a great jumping off point, even, and that's also not why I chose to like help them use found words. Like you can borrow this, that's fine, because you may not have the confidence, right, to articulate these very hefty ideas. Um, so I do think that that helped them not only in conferences with myself, but as they were in partners giving feedback. Mm -hmm. Definitely comes through in the piece for when you really are analyzing and noting. It's an excellent piece. Good work. It's really interesting to think about the decisions you made too around the found, like the idea of the found poetry and what that supports. That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. So Suzanne, do you want to, um, thank you, Janelle. Um, Suzanne, let's uh, share some of uh, Jahan. Is that? Mm -hmm. Yep, Jahan. Jahan, okay. Let me share. So, um, this is here. Do you, can you see that his piece? Yes. Okay. Do you want to give us some context and background for this? Sure. So the way I approached um, the, the documentary is we watched it first and we had, I had the kids jot down just kind of their initial thoughts or notes, kind of these big ideas that were being discussed through the film. And the first activity we did, we just kind of took those big kind of key words that kept cropping up. So like education, acceptance, community, of course, liberty, freedom, um, just these kind of big words. And we did some kind of playing around with them. We did some word manipulations and and that lesson is in our, um, you know, visit our classrooms. If you click by my, my resources, you can find all of that. And then the next step was to um, turn those kind of abstract ideas into a more kind of concrete examples by writing uh, this, I believe, essays. Um, and so I wanted them to focus on kind of like an American idea or a question that, you know, what it means to be an American kind of raises and that must kind of be the focus of their essay. Um, and then I wanted them to kind of bring in um, some of the ideas from the American Creative Literary Quote or just kind of like referencing it or just referencing the, those ideas. Um, and so Jay Hans here is about, he kind of focused in on the word acceptance and his, in his essay is going to focus a little bit on community. Great. And I have the audio here so we can hear him read it. Mm -hmm. I believe in acceptance by Jahan. I believe in acceptance. What is acceptance? Acceptance is the willingness to tolerate. It is a second chance. It is a new beginning. I believe that America is not great at accepting. Though America is not great at acceptance, I believe we can improve. We can make America a better place to live in. At the moment, I think we should recognize that America is absolutely terrible at that. And I mean that with no grain of salt. If you were to take a look at the television right now, you would hear news talking about immigration into our country being bad. In my experience, I have two separate communities. My American community, which is my school and friends, and I have a community of Muslims outside of school that I hang around with. I go to the mosque with these people and spend a lot of time around them. For those of you wondering, a mosque is a place where I go to pray. I notice a main difference between these two communities because the latter is made up of only a few people. We are all warm and inviting and have a strong sense of community. Whenever someone's family member passes away, we are always there for each other. Because of this, I really enjoy that sense of communities. In other circles I have, there are sometimes people who, are, who act cold. This makes me not want to participate in a certain group. Because of these observations, I have come to the conclusion that acceptance and warmth is a strong foundation for community. Even though we are bad at accepting, I think we still have hope. Being accepting is being warm, kind, and helpful. These are the values that make up a good community. The key to a better future is change. Though it sounds small, all we have to do is make sure that we are accepting. We can do this by simply taking our negative mindset about the world and making it positive. You have to remember, we are all just links in a huge chain. Just by being accepting, you can change our community. 
Though this is a small change, one weak link can break the chain. We all have to try. We all have to be kind. I, I believe that we can all be accepting and work towards a better future. That is the America I want. Yay. <laughs> it was so funny whenever I asked him if I could use his essay for this, he was like, you think my words are good? And I'm like, yes, yes, they are. The ideas are great. <laughs> and like, it's, it's just exactly the theme that we've kind of been discussing, you know, that feeling a sense of community, that self in the community, but also not being afraid to like call out whenever it's not all, all rosy. And so I, I really liked his, the balance that he had um, in his essay and, and really kind of embracing um, the way like one of his community acts and which is that another community that he belongs to accepted those kind of same acceptance, I guess. So I love I loved that he wasn't afraid to call out the negative a little bit, and, but also, you know, looking forward. The ultimate goal of this, I believe, essay is to kind of like the American Creed documentary was to look at the hope that it, one of these things could provide. So ultimately look um, at how to, you know, take a reflection, but also, but also look forward and how can we help and improve and just have that hopeful outlook. Great. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the things I definitely noticed was that. Mm -hmm. Janelle or Don, do either of you want to start? I started last time, so. <laughs> I noticed uh, right away the challenging of, of society, but then also the challenge with a call to action. Of, of an approach to improve. I also noticed the specific examples in, from his life and the emphasis and passion in the vocal delivery. What a gift, Suzanne, that you gave that eighth grader. I mean, to be able to say it's okay if you situate this huge idea of acceptance and community but start with where you are and really consider and reflect how that impacts you. That is so challenging because, you know, I'm just the grade above them and they're still wading through a lot of them. How can I survive? How can I make sure that I know who I am? Am I being a good person? Am I, and there's so much focus on I and me. And really a lot of it is out of survival because there's that like, tugged in 8 million directions, but to give them that opportunity and space and even the skills to make those connections on what their identity, how it's shaped by their community, but also how their community is shaped by them, like there's a symbiotic relationship going on, is huge. And I think that there were so many profound ideas expressed in that. So, wow, thanks. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I also was just struck by the um, the strength of his voice, both when I read it as well as when I heard it, um, and also this how well, like a sophisticated. But I'm trying not to judge it, like trying to be more descriptive. Mm -hmm. But I think it is that relationship between self and community and how he really goes back and forth between the two and then his um his hope is actually an action step you know this is this is what i propose we do <laughs> and we're all responsible for this including myself mm -hmm. so i saw you know so i think what janelle and don have said that that um uh, it has this very strong um, vision that feels like it, it, it gets to a point where there's like now clearly things to do. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> One of the, the struggles that came with um, this particular essay, um, you know, you have like the kids that just kind of want to skim the surface or going to give like, you know, dictionary definitions of things and and so one of the things I really worked with them was like, dig a little deeper. I'm like, make this personal. Like, this is not necessarily like an opinion essay. You're not trying to persuade anybody. You're just sharing something that you believe in um, rooted in your own experience. And it's, it was almost like that had never occurred to them before. So I think um, 
and they're they're eighth graders, right? So it's like, how often do you, do they get asked their opinion? And especially about like these ideas, like big ideas, you know, what does it mean to be an American? What's my role in this society? I'm just a kid. What kind of voice do I have? And so, but I'm like, no, you have a voice. Only you can tell your story and bring your experiences into it. And so just encouraging um, that aspect in, in this particular piece of writing. Um, I had a lot of kids that really stepped up to, to that challenge and really work to making this personal, bringing in their, their, either their experiences or the experiences of their parents or grandparents um, to kind of ground those big ideas in something um, that was more meaningful to them. And I think that they kind of really responded to being even asked <laughs> and be, having that opportunity. I, my students that are doing the work with American Creed are mostly juniors. And so as I reflect on the different experiences and materials that your students in, in eighth grade and a ninth grade are doing, I just feel very inspired and excited about it to think about how they're able to think about themselves, their histories themselves and where they situate themselves in terms of American culture and society and having a voice. So the notion of the importance of having a voice really, really resonates with me, of course. I wanted to just share again, the visit to our classrooms um, page where if you scroll down, you'll see, um, well, behind that, that button is uh, Suzanne. Um, <laughs> And here, this link will take you to some of the word manipulation activities that you mentioned. And clearly this, this idea of acceptance was, you know, a, um, sort of a pivotal piece, or it seemed like a, a piece that really helped start the rest of this. As well as some examples, um, early on you shared some examples of this, I believe, essays from your classroom. And then I know that there are others actually now published to the website. So. Any questions for Suzanne before you move on? Again, we don't have to. Okay, great. Thank you, Suzanne. Um, and thank you, uh, Jahan and Isabella too, if you're listening. Okay, Dawn, let's see. We have this piece that is a collaborative piece. So as I get it queued up here, do you want to give us a little bit of context? Absolutely. So my students, um, just to give you this, so a little bit of the sequence, and it's highlighted on that website too, we started with really writing and brainstorming around American values and cultures and creeds did a lot of writing related to youth voices on youthvoices.live students were posting arguments related to um, american creed before watching the film and then we did had discussions with youth across the country through the youthvoices.live platform and then students did some independent reading and continued to have a lens with which they were looking at american values and creeds in their books so um one student um for instance, right, right now my students just finished their independent reading books for this year and um, responses. And I had one student that was reading My Sister's Keeper, for instance, and she was saying how thinking about um, family decisions and medical decisions and legal decisions are, are part of our lives in the US. So she was teasing it out in that regard. And then of course, students do that with other books and then they're posting and dialoguing online. And then we move into, after the documentary, we have been having discussion around it and we move into projects of their design. And so I have some students that wrote about immigrants and their families' histories and stories. And I have some students that created videos. And last year I had one student that said, well, we've been working on youth voices in this platform for a while. I want to talk further with other students. So she said, can we have a youth cast? I'll come with the questions and we'll have a youth cast. So last fall, um, Paul Allison um, from New York helped us out as well. And students from my classroom in Okemos, Michigan, students from Casey Olson's classroom in Montana, and from Sam Reed's class in um, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, we're all in conversation with one another. And so 
um, what Christina has up there. She has some, a lot of the current things that uh, have been posted um, just yesterday about their books. And so a lot of ideas related to um, American creed and our culture and what things are at odds with one another and what do we believe. So, so the, the, my piece is a little different because it's a long piece. You'll see that, that it's like what, an hour, almost 30 minutes. Um, so, but it is a youth cast of those three different schools and Paul is also in there. So I'm not sure how our clip will look, but we'll see what we can see. Yeah, let's try it. Um, so yeah, this is the clip that the uh, video, the youth cast that was ultimately published by the student at American Creed. Um, and as you can see, it's 54 minutes long. Um, this is the Youth Voices site where the students met each other the first time, right? Um, and then came here and shared their work. So let me open this up and then start us. I think we're starting about the right place, okay. So I already kind of explained, you know, the context of this, but my first question is, what does America mean to you? What do you think are some important American values and how do they relate to your personal values? Well, America to me means diversity and unity. I agree with that because um, I was adopted as a kid, so coming here and like where we go to school, there's a lot of different cultures. People are adopted. They come from all over. Like America to me is a place where like people can all try to be equal and strive to be equal and have equal chances. Um, I think America is supposed to represent um, you know, freedom, opportunity. Um, and I think it's doing a okay job at the moment. Not, not a great job, just okay. Philadelphia, I think it, it might be just a small change, but if you could just lean the webcam somehow down a little bit, we'll be able to see you then. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Okay. And then speak up. Please, you gotta be yellow. Okay, thanks. All right, so basically what I said was I think America represents you know, um, freedom and opportunity. And I think we're doing an okay job at, at portraying that. Um, not a great job, just okay. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we're all, um, like, lots of people have like an unfair advantage or a disadvantage. And so while well, it's not perfect, we're all trying to work towards that. And um, because currently there are a lot of like people that are like not, that are definitely not as advanced, have an advantage as us, but people, they still want the same. So lots of other people are trying to help them in the field. Okay, does anyone have anything else they want to say? Um, okay, so, so I guess, how do these American values relate to like your personal values? Are they the same? Are they different? Are there more that you know? I don't know where the right place to stop is, but I thought maybe I would just stop and check in at least. Um, that probably works. What? That works. Okay. Um, I I know that they were trying to figure out. They start going into figuring out like the the, the sound volume in Philadelphia because they got a whole group of students, um, but. Um, the whole hour is really amazing to watch with that kind of back and forth between the students. Um, and, you know, like anybody sort of sitting in front of a camera, it's kind of like, you know, you're not sure who's speaking at first and all of that, but it's just, I don't know. 
Um, I think it's a wonderful thing to really sit down and watch the full hour. So I'm sorry to even stop it, but maybe we can do a little bit of noticing um, from what we saw, uh, Suzanne and Janelle. So I just really responded to like, this, this is these are, this is how our kids like interact now, you know, so it's in the video, more of a face to face, you know, um, unlike an, an essay where you like write it, respond, maybe do like peer response, whatever. But this, I think this is more of a, you know, a generational thing. So this kind of format and asking those questions and having those conversations and um, using the tools available to them, you know, this is this right up there, right up their alley. Um, I love the idea of going, you know, hooking up with different classrooms around the country. Um, and then some of their responses, you know, were, they stacked up. So they were building off of each other and someone put an idea out there and they're like, yeah, I agree with that. And then also and build on top of it. So you're kind of building those connections around the country instead of just like in your little classroom or your just friend group or whatever. So I really like them building on each other like that. Yeah, I thought it was interesting that we see that um, the common thread through all three of the student work that there's work to be done, that here it is, this country of great promise, but, you know, we're, we, we value that, but, oh, we're not perfect at that, so what can we do? Um, not Maybe not to get perfect, but to improve it. Um, but I thought, like, how wonderful is that, you know, that they're able to say, you know, no, if we all agree on this, or if we, you know, hold this in such high regard, then why, why can't we make it better? Um, that's like, I got a real optimistic, um, not just complaining, but no, like, let's, let's do something. And like, it just, it really reminds me of a discussion that I had with one of my kids learners today was, you know, I just think we're different genera generationally. And I said, well, maybe you are in, you know, when Suzanne said, well, this is how they interact, you know, you can FaceTime, you can do whatever. It's just, you know, real quick, like, let's talk about that. Um, but I feel like maybe that this will be the generation that's like, all right, well, then let's do something about it. Let's stop being apathetic. Let's get out there and vote. Let's put our heads together and come up with a plan. And I, I feel like that that piece really modeled that and demonstrated the potential that could happen and maybe we could have something like that uh for the 3d community i'm just saying there's lots of classrooms that want to hook up so maybe we could do that that would be really exciting and then i also wonder you know don like the power of getting feedback to a piece and ha having those different insights you know like looking at you know a piece of media or looking at a writing and say, oh, okay, that's, that's really interesting, but how can we get, you know, we're always wondering, like, how can we get a fuller picture? So offering those different perspectives from kids from different classrooms would be fascinating. Um, yeah, I definitely felt that same, like, it just even that small clip, the sense of, like hope and um, clarity <laughs> among the kids. Um, not necessarily clarity of what to do, but clarity of the situation isn't really what they want it to be and that there's, there's work to be done, um, which is quite powerful. I mean, I think it's powerful that the student Sophia decided to, to as her project, do this in the first place. That's a, the... Other thing I really want to notice is that that's, this was her creation. Um, and I'm looking at the post um, that she posted with the video and she writes at the end um, that the conversation, so her opinion, the conversation was interesting, thought provoking and eye opening. I hope that you enjoy listening to this conversation and that it makes you think. So she's definitely, and I think, like you get the sense that she's she's thinking of it as sort of something larger than just um, that it's it's meant to to be for an audience beyond these students. You know, it's it's meant for an extended audience, which I think is really powerful. 
Yeah, because I had students had choice and how they what how they wanted to respond. This one is very different than all the rest because it's very raw in the sense of we're going to have a discussion and see what happens. And so I just I wanted to lift that up. The two my two students, Sovan and Sophia, who were in this. Um, discussion with Casey Olson and Sam Reed students. Um, they went on this fall, a year, um, almost a year later, to be part of our local panel at our at the public library, where we had a community screening of the film, and then we had um, local community members, and then those two students, and they continued to add on to the dialogue and ideas that they were raised here in a local setting around dialogue. So I'm, I just had to share that because that's the extension of it, that it's carried on over a year that they're continuing those conversations. That's awesome. Any questions for Dawn before we shift from this? Okay. Um, so I'd like to suggest just because of the time and I know that people have commitments and stuff this evening that we sort of move into thinking about some of the cross cutting themes across without looking at more student work. I feel, I don't know about you guys, but I sort of feel like, wow, this was a, this is how to do a powerful session at NCTE is to share this work and sort of open up that dialogue. Um, that's one thing. Maybe we can talk about that before we end and remind people to come to our NCT session and contribute to the conversation. But um, uh, but for now, why don't we just like talk about some of the cross cutting themes that we see, and then um, maybe that's something we can invite others to add to when we get to that session. Uh, Janelle sort of kicked us off already with this, you know, this idea that there's there's there are these. Um, ideals and these ideas that that um, are powerful and there's still a lot of work to be done um, seem to be something that cut across them. Am I saying that correctly, Janelle? Yeah, I think, um, but I think that what's interesting too, and just like listening to reflections and thoughts of my freshmen and even trying to bring up civic issues, it's like they feel the pressure too, right? Like they know that they're supposed to be more active, but you go four years, let's say in high school, right? From just entering, figuring out who you are, figuring out how you are, who you are in your community, figuring out what your community is or communities are. And then having to, oh, okay, at 18, you should vote. Everyone should vote. You know, like everyone should vote. Everyone should, we should we should feel empowered by this right that we have to vote. But then there's this big, huge missing chunk of, well, how do I become informed? And that they're not really getting it anywhere else um, because like it is literally something where like, oh, we don't talk about that. Or, oh, we'll talk about this, but just this point of view. Or, oh, so seeing, you know, the youth cast was great. Just seeing the pieces of work that ask them to consider and reflect um, and, and know that they're parts of various com communities and know that their thoughts and ideas and how to improve or change those communities are also civic issues. This also connects to other, you know, civic issues. Um, I think that's important to give them that space and time to comprehend and know that. And I think that all three of those pieces really articulated it and showed that well. I see just kind of a level of bravery that comes across with these mm -hmm. students willing to share their words and have these discussions. And I think that's something that teachers can learn from because I know like in Oklahoma, it's a very conservative state. Um, and we have a lot of conservative areas, and I know that that's true across the country. And so there may be teachers that are hesitant, like Janelle saying, like where we have to like step up and teach the kids like how to be civilly engaged. But then there's also people are like, I don't know, because I don't want to get in trouble, you know, on on my end. So 
that might be something that we can help encourage other teachers on how to have these conversations with their students and even how to have this conversation with administrators and other teachers and parents um, and coming from it at the angle of civic engagement and not a you know a bipartisan political um, focus so and we can take inspiration from from our students like they're already thinking about these things um, they want us they want America to be better they want you know like Jehan was saying like we need to be better at accepting we just need to be kinder we need to work together we need to address these issues um, in Janelle's piece and then and um, the students that Don featured here was like you know yeah we can build upon these ideas but also looking like we're not great in these areas and we can fix we can help fix that and so I just you know that level of bravery is just kind of something that I'm kind of awed by even just reading my own students work and in the work that's been on the on the website on the on the writing our futures website I, I want to echo that idea of bravery I was really struck by that too and I was also struck by you know the the space that you all created for them um to be able to articulate i mean sort of what what you just said janelle like um <laughs> here hold on a second let me let someone else go <laughs> i'll jump in it's funny i had the same thing going on on my computer of course <laughs> um I am excited about the spaces and thinking about the spaces in which we create opportunities for students to have courageous conversations. Um, that's really what I was hearing Christina say. And I was thinking about, I like this notion of what does it mean to be brave to do this? I, I was thinking for our students, each of these pieces also reflected to me the importance of literacy and education and what it means to be able to have access and to embrace the opportunity to speak up and write and do something and to be involved in our world. And um, I've really seen that in these pieces and in these conversations and in the work that, that, that our students are doing this fall. One of my big things I keep repeating in, in different circles is um, why keep teaching? Because students give me hope, because young people give me hope. And so as I think about all the things that they're wrestling with to make sense of the world around them, they're doing some amazing things. And I and I I just I get excited about that because they're recognizing this, like here are the things we can celebrate and we need to do something. And I think that that's um, pretty powerful. Thank you for picking it up. And I agree, I think it's um, this, this idea that students are sharing so much of themselves in this, and then also sharing their, like you said, Janelle, like that where their communities. You know, and being able to name their communities and really be clear of their role in community. So I know we all have to leave. Um, we have other commitments, even this late at night. Um, so I appreciate you all for making the time to be here. Um, and that was the call that uh, Dawn and I were getting in the background for our next meeting. But I want to give everybody a chance just to give final thoughts. Uh, Janelle, maybe you can go first and then we'll. Everybody else can jump in. I think that um, what also is happening, you know, through the work, one final thing is, you know, with that collaboration between teacher and student, the collaboration between peers, when they're receiving that feedback and really working through concepts and drafting in whatever they're creating across any type of um, medium. And that collaboration of constructing meaning and plans of having to do it, that, that is important as well to teach and to give space for. And I think that they really, they know it instinctively that, you know, here I am, this one person, I can make this change, but really depends on other people too, stepping in. So as much as we can create those opportunities for them to gain those and learn how to do those soft skills, is just as important. 
That's great. Thank you. And I know you have to go. So whenever you need to drop off, please. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thanks, Janelle. Really Bye. appreciate it. Last words or thoughts from others? Don, go ahead. Yeah, I, I would echo what Janelle said, creating the spaces for students to be able to engage in this work and collaborate, super important. I think also it, with this particular topic of being civically engaged, of course we have lots of issues we can tackle and we also have um, other conversations around the need to, how people are thinking about, you know, midterm elections and how they're gonna vote. And I think it's important to know that students have different opinions and can discuss them and respect each other in that process. Um, because a lot of my students will say that's not always what they see in terms of the models around them. And then I say, okay, we're gonna talk about what's on your mind related to this. And they respect each other and talk about issues and pull out facts and actually get into um, making sure they have valid information. And so they want to be, um, intelligent about their work. They want to find truth. They want to read carefully and critically so that they are reading against fake news, so that they're actually reading true content and moving forward productively. And so I find a lot of hope in that. So this is very good work for, for all of us. One thing that I noticed, especially with my students, is that building of their confidence and being able to express their ideas, but also having their work validated. So all of the students that I approached to that, hey, I want to use your work um, for this research and these, these, these projects that I'm involved in, like I want to use your essay and feature it. And they were all like, you want to use my work? I didn't think it was that good. And I'm like, yeah, it is that good. Like people need to know about it. And so I think that might be a little bit of a writer thing, but also like they still see that, you know, they're young, what kind of impact can I have? So building that confidence and just, you know, again, you know, encouraging that work with them and um, letting them do their own, um, pr pursue their own pursuits and figure out, you know, what, what is it they want to say and then letting them share that and providing those opportunities. And that's really valuable, especially in this, this particular project really allows for those opportunities. Wonderful. And um, you all have put together such amazing resources around all of this work. Dawn, you also have a full set of resources and uh, curriculum that you've shared. Um, so I want to encourage people to go to the writingourfuture.org um, writing slash American Creed website um, and look under resources and visit our classrooms is the, the key link to go to. to um, to find a bunch of the work that um, we've been developing in our classrooms. Um, I want to also encourage you all, if you're at NCTE, to come to this session on Friday, November 16th at 3.30 to 4.45. Um, and we'll share other student work um, and be able to talk across, continue this conversation across the work and what we notice about it what feels important about it, and what some of our next steps might be in developing this work um, in um, our classrooms together. And um, just uh, thank you all for coming here. Thank you to your students for sharing their wonderful work. And um, really appreciate you making the time to talk with us tonight. This has been a broadcast of the National Writing Project, and we wish you good evening.